this video, I want to cover a way to reorient your parts in SOLIDWORKS. And this is most useful for importing or exporting files. So first I'm going to open up a neutral CAD file and bring it into SOLIDWORKS. Now we're greeted with a prompt on if we want to run import diagnostics. This is always a good idea to do. And we'll see in this case, there's no problems with the geometry. But if there were, we could attempt to heal them here. You want to do this before continuing on and building up uh, any modifications to the model. I don't want to run feature recognition, so I'm going to choose no. And then now, depending on which CAD system this file originated out of, the part may be in a different orientation. Some CAD systems, like SOLIDWORKS, use Y up, and other CAD systems use Z up. So what this means for us is that if we try to access some of our standard views, like my top view, I'm looking at a strange view of the part. And my front view is really what I'd like to be my top view. So rather than dealing with this as we continue to work with the model, I'd like to reorient it before I do anything else. And I'll do that by using a feature that's under the Insert Features and then move copy or move copy body command. There's two different ways this can operate and we'll talk about both of them. The first mode allows specifying a translation or a rotation. And we can do this by entering values or selecting a body visually on the screen. Note that where we place the rotation about can have an impact. So if you want to specify a rotation axis, you can choose down in this prompt here, and then choose the edge that you want to roll the part along. And if you know the precise amount that it needs to be rotated, you can enter that value here, or you can use that triad on screen to reposition it. And then now you can see we've got the part oriented in the desired orientation. When you use direct editing commands, like the move copy body feature, they put a feature in the tree, which you can still roll back above to see the original state of the model. And we can roll back below that to see the transformation. If you needed to rotate and translate, you could do that in two successive steps with the second move copy body command. Now, if you have a part that comes in a really weird orientation, let's take a look at an alternate approach. So here I've got a part that if I look at my base planes, we can see that the part is really just completely rotated in space. So to orient this, I'll again use the move copy body command, but I'll use it in its other mode, which you can switch back and forth by clicking the little button on the bottom that says either constraints or translate rotate, depending on which mode you're in. And using it in the constraints mode basically allows mating inside a single part file. So much like you'd mate inside an assembly, you can choose any references and then choose the faces you want to mate to and then click add to continue inserting additional mates. So this way you can quickly reposition and choose where you want these you know, datums or reference planes to be. And then when you're happy, click the check mark and we've got a fully reoriented part. This time accomplished using mates. And as you can see, you can edit these features after the fact, uh, modify the dimensions for translations and rotations, or modify the mates that are used. So again, this can be used to reorient imported models or also before performing an export. If you're specifically exporting and needing to apply a certain rotation over and over again, or relocate a part, then another option would be to go into your system options and under the export settings, you'll be able to choose an output coordinate system. So you could put a reference geometry coordinate system into your part template, for instance, and then reference that in your options to always be exporting part files in a different coordinate system. And there's a video linked below in the description on creating coordinate systems if you're interested.
If you're using these direct editing commands frequently, you can right click an existing tab of the command manager to turn on the direct editing tab. And we have a video tutorial on these direct editing commands that will also be linked. Be sure to let us know in the comments section below what type of content you'd like to see next.